My name is Ivan. I live in Edmonton, Alberta. I am a web developer, mobile developer, developer, developer. <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't go to school. Uh, I used to be a plumber, actually. I did that for five years. I actually, I dropped out of school because uh, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, I moved to Alberta. I picked up a trade. I thought it was going to be good. I hated it, but it paid nicely. Um, one day when I was working like an hour and a half outside of where I was living, I just realized I couldn't keep doing this. Like I couldn't keep working in the trades. It's, it's just not sustainable. And I uh, quit my job and taught myself how to code, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty crazy. Uh, I also, after that, like it was like a year um, of not having a job. Um, I applied to punch card, which is where I work at right now. And they, uh, after like two interview things, they, they hired me on as a junior developer and I've been developing ever since. It's been like two, two years, almost three years now. And so what, I'm curious, like, okay, so what was that like one moment that you decided, like what made you decide programming? Like, was it just, you saw there people doing it or? I wanted to do something with computers. I knew that when, when I started, when I was plumbing, I just, I didn't know what exactly. And I knew I wanted, like, I didn't want to plumb. Like, I didn't want to work in construction. I didn't want to work in the trades um, any much or much longer. So I tried to find things that I would be able to teach myself that would be marketable, like, you know, going further. Um, I actually didn't even think about coding for a while. Um, up until I was like, I'm sitting on YouTube and there was like this I think it was like a five or six minute thing where it's like, learn about JavaScript. And I was like, okay, you know what? Why not? Let's just open it up. And I watched it and they put some stuff on the screen and it moved and I'm like, okay, I'm sold. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and like, as, as I was like getting into it and learning more about like programming, coding, there were like similarities between construction and what I was doing and like how certain systems work in like, in not how the certain system works, but how certain things work when you're programming or coding. I was like, huh, I might have some transferable skills I might be able to move over. So I was like, cool, um, let's do it. Let's try it out. Um, and then I got hooked after I went through this pretty cool tutorial on, uh, I think it was Unity or no, it was Python. Um, and I was like, oh, cool. Like I got this, it was stupid. It, it took like one word and then made like three sentences out of it. And I was like, yeah, yeah, now I'm fully sold. Like, this is definitely something I want to do. Um, and I just, that, at that point, I just kind of consumed every bit of, like, resource there was out on the internet, you know, like blog posts, uh, Medium, Dev2, YouTube, Udemy, like, Pluralsight, um, you name it. I was just, like, pretty much, hand, like, heads down, like, going in through this stuff. Um, it was really fun. And what did you, like, how did you focus? Like, what did you choose? Like, did you just pick whatever you saw or? Yeah, actually, I, I just YouTubed. This. I started off with Python and I was like, oh, cool. Like, this is cool. Like, the syntax is kind of similar to how we speak in English. So, like, some of the conventions that they're using are pretty not easy to get. But, like, once you understand how, how coding works and, like, how languages work, you're like, oh, cool. Like, it's just another way to speak, right? Like, you're speaking yeah. to a computer. I was like, I wonder how other languages are like. And then I started jumping from, like, I went, I built something in Python, then I built something in C sharp and I was like, and then I hopped into JavaScript and I was like, whoa, this is, this <laughs> is the land. <laughs> um, and I kind of just stuck with that um, ever since. Um, since I started working at Punch Card, I mostly work with a lot of TypeScript and uh, C sharp. So, and a lot of SQL, um, but that, and Azure as well, but those are external tools. Um, <laughs> Yeah, and I just kind of kept doing that for a while. Well, so what were like the first few projects? Like, what did you get started on? Like, when you first started, what was uh, like? What did they get you doing that like you thought was really interesting? And oh, do you mean at, at work yeah. or like? By yeah, like when you just well, I mean, okay, so like you you taught yourself how to code, so we could go into that too. But I'm actually like really curious, like what did you work on when you first got there? Uh, so we have this uh, we have this project called Buffalo. Um, Basically, we, there's this company in Alberta that does like pipeline or oil and gas uh, services. So they do x-rays on pipes and x-rays on pipelines throughout Alberta. Uh, so it's one of their oldest projects. And basically, they onboarded me by giving me like one of the tasks to like go through this project to like solve a bug. It, it took 
they were like, you have like three weeks, you know, like it's whatever, like you have questions, let us know, like if you understand how to set this up, if you're not understanding how this works, like we can pair a program together. Um, so when I first started, I was like, this is super overwhelming, like it's a gigantic. <laughs> there's stuff happening over here and there's stuff happening on the other side and you're like what is going on and like trying to understand how people how different people write code because it's such a big project and it's lived for so long like I think there's like 20-ish people who have touched this 20 30 people have touched this project so you open one file there's one way someone's writing something you open the next file you're like whoa we have jumped into a different language here or like a different way of we, how we set things up when I first started, I, it was a lot of like pair programming with uh, some of the more senior people and some of the team leads. Um, it was a lot of also like, I, I, I would say the first two or three days I wasn't coding a lot. It was more so like, here's this team. This is what we do. Like sit in on some of the meetings, understand how they function as a part of the team for our company and then moving to different teams and seeing how they work. And then after understanding that we got it all, we got like my machine set up got my environment set up and then they're like yeah here's your first task and I'm like oh man <laughs> <laughs> it was uh it was stressful still and did uh that, that, did you you finish the bug you fixed the bug in the in the three weeks probably with their help and oh yeah it, that felt really good because you know there how do I put this when you're learning to actually doing it professionally are like two very different things so like you know you, you you're learning you're like ah oh, cool bar a equals whatever that's great you you do it professionally someone's like var a equals this function that's doing something else that's manipulating something here and it you just gain a lot of experience on working with other people and understanding how other people write code it just kind of like it builds you up so when you start tackling other problems you have like different patterns and different ideas of how you can solve something um but yeah <laughs> it was fun it was it was difficult it was stressful still is stressful but it's fun <laughs> I guess, it, I mean, it doesn't ever get like less stressful to change the, pro well, it's, it's not like less, fewer, it's not like you run out of problems. It just like gets harder and harder. Right. It's like, it's like different problems that you face because like when I first started, I'm like, oh man, how do I, how do I be productive? How do I write code? Like, how do I get my first commit in there? How do I start building features? And then as you go on, you're like, cool. How do I take this user story and turn this into actual code? Great. How do I talk to this client and take what they're, what their idea is and put it into a user story that you then put into code. Like, you know, it's yeah. the, the problems grow as you grow and it, your scope of your role ends up being a lot more because you understand your role is more than writing code. <laughs> yeah. Like you're not just like solving the one little task anymore. Like now you're like working out, you, you grow past that. You're kind of like managing. I, I always think of it as like, if you have like little building blocks, and then you're like, it's like how you build code too, right? Like you're assembling like smaller components here and there, and then eventually it all gets up and connects. And then you've got these systems that talk to each other. So you've got multiple different uh, entities, I guess. And then you could even think of it like a team kind of a similar way. Like you've got your uh, like individual skills followed by like <laughs> people skills too. And that's interesting. I like that. There, there's a lot to it too. Like, you know, I, when I first started, I was like, oh, it's all about the code. It's all about the code. And then as you go through and you experience like you get through your career you realize it's more about like understanding people and like being able to communicate because sure you can write code and that's great but you know like being able to communicate with the clients or your teammates or anyone who is that you're trying to explain something or like trying to show somebody something as long as you can communicate that with other people that's like that's a pretty good skill to have so totally yeah <laughs> which like i guess in, in, a, in a way like you've always been like a, a great people person. So it's kind of funny because at the end of the day, like that ends up being the end, end skill that you need to master. And you're like, well, already there. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it's interesting. I, I never thought I would ever be it. Like if you asked me this like six years ago, seven years ago, I, this would not have been a thing I would have, asked. you know, writing code with me, what the hell is this? You know, like <laughs> it's crazy to see how like, time changes like your perspective and like the things that you find important. So it's just cool to see. When I remember, I remember like me, like seeing on, on LinkedIn that you were like posting about your, your job and then being like, Oh crap, like congrats, man. Like that's a pretty cool accomplishment. And like, it came out of nowhere to me cause I hadn't, we hadn't spoken in a while. I I'm really impressed. Like, I think like being able to like learn how to code in a, in a year and go to like professional developer 
is like pretty like fast, like super fast. I mean, I, you had like a hundred percent focus. It sounds like. I, I didn't even think I was going to get, get to that point. I didn't think they were going to hire me. I like, I rolled into this interview and I'm like, I am prepared to fail, but I am ready to learn and, you know, like take whatever I learned from this interview and like, hopefully in six months and maybe another year, I'll get it. I'll have, I'll have the, or not the experience, but the, the confidence in my own skills to apply for an actual position and, you know, ace this interview and stuff. And they were like, oh yeah, you know, we, we're really happy with your, your interview. We're really happy about how easy you are to learn. And I'm like, are they hiring me? Holy shit. Oh, I mean, holy <laughs> crap, they're hiring me. Holy. <laughs> so the, yeah. <laughs> I, I feel really lucky. So what are you like thinking about, like, what do you think you have to like learn next? Like what's the things you, you struggle with now that you're like really excited about coming up? The thing, hmm, the stuff that I struggle with most is like, is, is the, the working, is understanding the, what the clients need. I say clients, but understanding whatever it is that you're trying to build and being able to move that towards a solution that you can actually code out. So actually just a, so you said clients, but so do you guys not have clients? So like at punch card, we hate saying the word, cli I, I, I hate saying this too. I we hate saying the word clients because when you're working with somebody else, they're, they're part of the team, right? So they're, they're your teammates or your team members. Um, they're just not with the company. They're just with somebody else. Right. So, um, the way we work here, like when you say client, it means that we're just like, you know, it's just a transaction. They're giving us stuff. We're giving them stuff. That's the end of the relationship. But when you're worth a teammate, you know, you're like, you're trying to understand the problems they're facing. You're trying to help them out. They're trying to help you out as well because it's a collective. It's just a, you know, like it's collective service so that we can get out a product that everyone can enjoy. So we like to say the word teammates. And, that, and that's why I say, when I say clients, I don't like saying it, but that's just because it's punch card thing. <laughs> No, no, that's cool. I like it. I, I think that's actually like a really unique way of looking at it because like, I mean, I, I was working at agencies before and like 90% of the time, I mean, you know, you, you have a relationship with the client. You try to be very personal. Yeah. Like we would like go into an enterprise and like, we'd be like talking to them and like, you know, we're getting to know their team. We're, we're like actually travel scale kind of did similar stuff where we're like, we were pairing with people. Like we were big on extreme programming. So like that was like, we had to pair, but we were like, it's like a fun kind of like way to learn. So we were pairing almost hundred percent of the time. And then like, we would like work with a client and then like, at least some of the work I was doing, like we would literally be sitting there like side by side with the, the client, like working on a, a project, like working on a new feature or whatever. And like, we'd be like working directly with them. But like, I like that, like you're saying like, you know, they're not like, cause it, I mean, really like, if you think about like, I even like, if you're going to terminology, like, like, you know, scrum, or whatever right like you've got your product owner and the product owner is the representative of the you know the end user and so that's really like a person from the client like ideally in, a, in like a in a like services environment like you'd have that team member so that's cool so i think i cut you off there um yeah so you were talking about like how you actually um work with the um like your team members or the client or whoever, whomever you're like delivering value with, like you're taking their ideas and turning them into. Yeah. Into digital solutions. <laughs> Sometimes it's not that it's difficult, but other team members get really excited about the value that you're providing. Um, so, you know, they're like, oh, we have this great idea. You know, you have your, you have your sprint planning meeting. You guys have like decided on the things you want to build. It's great. The mid sprint plan, the mid sprint meeting rolls up and they're like, I had like six great ideas that I want to include in this sprint <laughs> and you know you, you don't want to tell them no because obviously it, it's an idea it's there it's the project that we're working on you know you want to see it succeed but you also have to realize that like the scope of the things and the amount of time you want things delivered in you know that they don't match up <laughs> so it's just I for me my struggle is finding that balance between um, letting your other teammates bring these new ideas and incorporating them into the project at the same time respecting the amount of time you have in a sprint with the amount of resources that you have on that specific project so that's still something i'm i'm still working on because uh you know like 
they're like, ah, I want this new feature and me trying to be nice and, you know, like trying to make sure that they have a good relationship. I'm like, sure, let's do it. And I'm like, immediately as I say, sure, in my head, I'm like, oh my God, I should not have said that because <laughs> the scope has now increased. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And then, so do you, when you do like a sprint, how, how long is a sprint you, for you guys? Uh, I think it's like two or three weeks. I, two or three weeks, okay. Yeah, it's not too, too short, because I think what, at Punch Card, like a week sprint is way too short to get really anything like of value out. And mm -hmm. I think anything past three weeks is way too long because then that ends up being like, you might as well just be a waterfall project at that point, but. Yeah, I'm just curious, because like, yeah, like, because I, I, I've i had that in like, a, like I've had that problem at like a grander scale, like when we have like, you know, a whole project and we've got like these set things that we want to do and then, you know, priorities keep changing sprint to sprint. But I don't think I've ever had it where um, like we, intentionally like modify the sprint like every sprint or like very frequently um <laughs> so i am curious like is, do you guys do like design up front do you or what do you how do you typically end up at the so it's like an iterative iterative process so we have like a design team usually they'll they'll mock up some stuff in figma um if you're any familiar with that so get some wireframes out we show them to our other teammates they, you know, they are like, oh, cool. Like this looks great. They give us feed or they give us feedback on how it looks on how the wireframes look. If there are any changes that they want to do or they want to make. Um, we do that before our sprint planning meeting. Um, and then when we're in our sprint planning meeting, we delegate out what is the most important to the least important of features that we want to get out for the sprint. Um, at the same time, we're still making changes to our wireframes while we're starting, while we're starting to work on the project itself so that from day one if we're starting a new project we can at least show them that we have something out so usually we try to get like what is it a uat site out so that they can go and mess around with things if it's a website if it's a web app um, if it's a mobile app we use app center so we try to get out like maybe like a bare bones build so we can at least show them that we have like an app that they can use um, and if the problem is more defined then we start working on it like from day one and we try to, what we try to do is like every two or three days, try to get something that is functional so that they can go and review it. So like, say it's like a form and it has like four fields in it, but it doesn't have any validation in it. And it doesn't have like a disable. Once you hit submit, you can smash it like a trillion times, but you know, like get them understanding, like if they have external users that are using this, like understand how a user would go and go throughout their application and use it. And if it's, works in the same in a similar way of how they think it is then we can continue onwards and iterate but if there are things that they would like to change at least we haven't made it too far ahead so that we can still make those changes and still be able to provide value at the end of the sprint okay and you're doing that like you're doing new wireframes um through to high fidelity like actually through to like finished pro feature at each sprint. yeah yeah okay which makes sense like if you're working on like if i i imagine you're working on like a part of a larger application when you're doing that right yes exactly it's not like we're doing the entire application and then it's just like oh these screens have changed now rework what you've just done it, it's it's usually just like um the baseline depending on where you are in the project like if it's at the beginning just the baseline and then the most important feature you know like you get the the skeleton of it in uh the skeleton of the flow of how a user would use it the functionality so they could test it out and once that's in then we can start building on top and they verify that that's how it is intended to be. Then, you know, we continue onwards. That's really cool. Okay. Yeah. Cause yeah. I can see how like, yeah. And then like, if you have the the client there and you're, you're showing them like new demos every few days, then I imagine that they have input and then you change kind of a few things here and there. Exactly. Right. It's, it's a way to prevent us from, you know, where you, you, you spend two weeks, you build something and then the end of two weeks, you show the client, they're like, no, this is like, this is not what I was thinking. You're like, cool, there goes two weeks. I guess we're back to the drawing board again. That way, <laughs> you know, the expectations that we have and the expectations our other teammates have, it, it, it's an easier way to gauge that. And it's easier way to gauge that, to know that we're on the right path. And then do you guys have like, a, like, are you working hands-on? Like your, your team has like a dedicated designer that's constantly kind of revising the wireframes? Yeah, so we have a design team at our company with like, we have three UX UI designers um, okay, yeah. that can also, uh, one of them actually does front end development as well. So okay. what he does is he'll build out the screens in Figma, 
uh, he'll, he'll deliver it to our other teammates. They verify that's cool. Then he'll actually like try and put up like a, a super, super, super MVP type thing where he has like the layout of how it would work. Um, and then, you know, they, they're like, cool, like this is what we're, you know, like this is the flow that we're expecting. This is great. And then once that's good, we just start building from that point onwards. And it's, it's interesting. It's fun. <laughs> that's really cool. It's pretty funny too. I've never really talked to anybody else outside of like my coworkers about this stuff. So this is like, this is new to me as well. So this, I think it's great that we can talk about this stuff and you like, you get what I'm talking about. <laughs> I do. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I, I think it's cool. Cause it's like, it's interesting. Cause yeah, like, um, like I've primarily spoken with people, you know, from the same company as me, I guess most of the time, or like in the same, like, I think in Toronto, there's such a, a, a cross pollination now of like, everyone's worked at like multiple different companies and you meet someone, they're like, Oh yeah. Like I used to work down the street. <laughs> and, and like, everyone's on the same street, right? There's like the one street of offices. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. Like, yeah, like that's, it's a different approach than any of the agencies that like I, I worked at in Toronto, but all the agencies I worked at in Toronto worked pretty well the same. Like they have like, you know, not, not quite the same. Like we would do like more big di design up front I found. Mm -hmm. um, and we'd iterate like sprint by sprint. So that's why I was asking about um, like tweaking it over the course of it. Like we would use like either a one week in tribal scale and then, um, depending on the client at, so at the other company I was at. Um, and I mean, when you're freelancing, it's, it's always yeah. like different <laughs> every single time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like I, I think that's cool. Cause it's like, we, we would do it. Um, like we would design it and then we would start building it. And then we test it with the client. You get like a demo day every Friday or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then that way you're kind of like tweaking things, but I don't think we would make that many big changes. Like I think a lot of the time we were selling like these design sprints up front. And so people would do a design sprint. They'd come up with some like, like sometimes it'd be like all over the place. They'd be like, all right, what if we made this into an Alexa skill? Oh, not a website, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> so like, it's very, very up there, like pie in the sky, which is, I mean, you got some cool products out of that as a result, right? Like some, some clients, they're like, oh, you know, like we really want to build like our own, um, I don't know, like reward system. And then you're like, well, okay, yeah, cool, cool, cool. Like talk about it. And then you find out like, okay, what they really want is like, they should just build a Shopify app and then they get like 90% of what they want, you know? So I think that's more like, uh, like, I guess like, I don't even know what that is. Like, that's not quite like design per se. It's more yeah, like a solution. It, it's like a weird mixture of both. Like I, I, I don't even know what to classify it as. Cause like, like I said, we talk about this in our company all the time. So I'm like, this is just normal for us, but yeah, it's just how you do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it's just interesting talking to other people who, you know, who aren't in your geographical area who are doing things differently. So it's just, I think this is super cool that we're doing this in general. <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's cool. I, I'm glad we got to do this too. Cause it's like, it's kind of funny cause we haven't spoken really, like, I don't think we've spoken in person since like, 2016 maybe 2015 like you came back one time uh to like visit and i think we ran into each other yeah it was such <laughs> a long time ago i know crazy man time flies i swear five years like damn <laughs> you know what the funny thing is i thought like oh it's like time's going so slow for for a while and then you know you hit like 28 and you're like or 27 and you're like <laughs> just like that's the same thing i hit 27 in like april and i swear to god i thought last month was like july and it's it's almost november time just flies you're just like what the hell's going on i'm just getting older especially when you're working from home right like every day is the exact same over and over you get up you go to your desk you don't even leave the the house sometimes most of the time <laughs> exactly right i'm like monday is friday friday is monday there is no difference it's a day <laughs> <laughs> oh man it's the work like i said the working from home thing is great if this wasn't a pandemic and you could yeah. go to other places. It's just, yeah, <laughs> gotta love COVID. <laughs> it's interesting though, cause like, I think like, you know, I always thought that the future of work was like remote, right? I agree. And I remember like always just going on and on about it, like ranting, like I read a bunch of books in, in high in university and I was like, all right, you know, like this is the future. Like I gotta get on this. I gotta be like, Tim Ferriss from now on four hour work week. And, uh, I worked in an office for, for a few years and I was, I'm like, shit, like I kind of, uh, I kind of liked it, you know? 
So I'm trying to figure out how to replicate that like in real life. Cause you know, the thing about going from university to working full-time in an office is you're basically going from one spot where you've got this like centralized friend group or whatever, like built in social gathering. And then you go to an office and you've got your built in social gathering and then you work from home and you're like, you know, you really can't see each other. You don't need to. And then it's just like, huh, what do you do? Like for us, um, we do our weekly meetings on Tuesday. So like we try to do like an icebreaker. Well, we try to do icebreakers that uh, get people just talking about like anything in general that isn't work stuff. Just so, cause you know, especially working in a pandemic, you're like, all you do is work. And then you try to relax. If you live in an apartment, that's hard to like find downtime because your workspace is your relaxed space. So like there's no variation, but um, we've tried also doing like some virtual games and stuff. We, we did an among us thing, like, we <laughs> okay, which is pretty cool. Um, some of the I haven't played the game, but I heard about it. I think my team plays it on Fridays. So I might. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. It's a, it's a great, great way to get people social and you know like getting that same level of sociability that you would get in an office which is pretty it's pretty fun uh sometimes even though you know like some of the guys i work with we go out on fridays like in the morning grab breakfast social distancing obviously but grab breakfast and like you know just talk about our weeks and talk about like the things that we've come across in work um just stay in contact with each other uh, we try to do like social events every once a month as well, just to keep people, you know, keep people from getting restless and feeling like they're alone. We try to find ways to engage everyone in some way, shape or form, you know, like we do like we have a team channel as well where we're like, hey, you know, like post pictures of your cat or like any crazy stuff that you've done or anything that you find interesting. And we usually try to have uh, like Reddit, you know, like people are like, oh, I found this Reddit post like while I was work, you know, like on my off time, on my off time. <laughs> That's kind of <laughs> interesting for other people to see. Um, you know, just stuff like that to try to get other people engaged other than doing work. Cause you know, it sucks when you just do work all the time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, I mean, like I've gotten into that loop cause I think I like, I really enjoy uh, like getting, like solving problems and, and getting things done. And like, that's kind of like, uh, been a big driver. I mean, it's, I think of anyone, right? Like you like coding, that's why you get into it. You love it. So then you get into it and then you start doing it and then it becomes a job, but your job is still a hobby kind of, but not quite, you know, you're kind of, you know, you start to resent it, I'm sure eventually, but like still right now, I'm like, I love this stuff. So I'll like spend all like, evening until like you know 11 o'clock at night just continuing yeah. to hack away or even just reading for work right yeah it's it's pretty it, it's interesting because you know like i i used to do a lot of that too um not now not so much because i find as like as much as i do love doing that like i i also like being able to relax and like have like i said have downtime and like be able to like not have because you know when you problem solve a lot and you you just get into that mindset of where you're like logically analyzing every single thing that you're doing and then once you leave your computer you're still doing that i i noticed that oh, yeah. as well. I'm like i used to call it uh seeing the matrix <laughs> 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 like you leave and then like you're driving home from work and you're planning your route as if like you're routing network traffic or something oh definitely <laughs> like it's the same i was like i finished working with things it was like a couple days ago i'm like oh let me make food and i'm like measure out the exact ingredients like the exact timing the exact temperature and i'm like holy crap what am i doing <laughs> <laughs> it's just uh yeah I, I i used to do that a lot and now i'm like especially because i i i think um yeah just trying to find time to trying to find downtime and relax who's realizing like you know you there's always there's always a lot of time in your life to solve problems and learn new things but there's never enough time to just chill and just do nothing so yeah <laughs> yeah I respect that do you what do you what do you do to chill <laughs> nowadays uh is this a pg podcast let's keep it uh like yeah I mean safe safe ish for work I don't think anyone listens to this at work <laughs> <laughs> um i am an avid cannabis user as we oh yeah, yeah. you know it, it is legal i spoke a, my my girlfriend works at uh, fire and flower um if you've ever oh cool that place 
She works. Yeah, one opened up down the street actually. Oh no way! That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> she works in the uh, the head office in Alberta or in Edmonton here as the customer success lead. Um, so I just smoke a lot of cannabis. Um, when the gym was open or when I'm not working literally like till seven, um, going to the gym, uh, I play a lot of League of Legends, a lot of League of Legends to downtime. Oh, nice. Well. I haven't played League since, well, since school. Uh, uh it's, you're not missing much, man. My no. rage, <laughs> no. my rage. Oh God. My rage. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't handle it. Um, <laughs> Other than that, I hang out with my cat, hang out with my girlfriend. Um, we, because it's October, we've been watching like scary movies pretty much all month. Just to, oh, nice, nice. <laughs> we're like, what else do we have to watch in Netflix? Because, you know, also in a pandemic, you just kind of go through Netflix's, Amazon Prime, whatever content you can find. And then you realize there's not enough content. And you're like, oh, I guess I should try some new things. So we started watching a bunch of horror movies. Um, Ooh, nice. Yeah. Any recommendations? Ooh, I thought originally when I was younger, I thought The Conjuring was really scary. We rewatched that. It's it's still scary. It's not as scary as I thought it was. Do you think it's because you already know it or because it's dated? Like if I watched it fresh, I don't know what's coming up because I haven't watched it. Do you think oh, it'd still be scary? It'd be scary. I feel right. it would be scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because I already watched it. I was like, I'm good. But actually, hmm, I don't know. My girlfriend said that, uh, I think she, no, I, she watched it already. So yeah, actually, I think, I think you're right. <laughs> It'd be All right. <laughs> <laughs> It is a great movie. I thought it yeah. was, uh, it has a pretty good story. So okay. I'd watch it, you know, it lights on though. Lights on. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, what do you do, do? What do you do for downtime? Oh man, I, I, I can't even, I was thinking about that as I was asking, I'm like, shit, I hope he doesn't ask. Uh, I, what do I do? I, I spend a lot of time like blogging and like writing. Oh, so, nice. and like this podcast has become, but this is like, I talk about code on the podcast. So it's fun. You know, it's kind of chill. Cause I get to like, hang out, like talk to people. Uh, like it's fun chatting with you, but like, it's still related to work. So I think like it's, you know, that stuff, but like I run, I run. Nice. And uh, I've been thinking about getting into some like video games or something like that, that Among Us game sounds pretty cool. Like I hear that you can just like host like a games night party type thing. Yeah. Doing that and it'd be solid, right? Oh yeah. Like we, we, cause I think you can get Among Us on your like PC and on your phone, but on your phone, it doesn't have like a voice thing. So what we did, uh, we used Microsoft Teams. Uh, so we have like two uh, breakout rooms with 10 people inside of it. And basically we're all on, you know, like we're all on voice and we're playing the game. Uh, <laughs> it, it's pretty funny. And some of the people that we played with, they're older. So, you know, sometimes you'll get in, in the voice thing, like, how do I like move this thing? And you're like, the thumbstick on the left is the movement stick. You, you, you press that, it goes. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh my God, that sounds great. Uh, yeah, it's, I think if you're going to try to do like a social event thing among us definitely would be the the way to go. Like, I guess my lifestyle is basically just like work and then get off, smoke a little weed, I guess sometimes. And then, hey. uh, I don't know if I should be admitting that. Anyways, <laughs> <laughs> it's legal. It's legal. Uh, yeah. So like get off at the end of the day and then just chill. Like I'll meet up with my girlfriend. We don't live together. So like weekends and stuff like that, you know, that's awesome. I mean, it seems like you're doing well by the way. So I'm happy you're doing okay. Yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing a pretty, I'm, I'm pretty happy with my life, but it seems like you're doing pretty damn well as yourself, man. Yeah. I'm really <laughs> glad to hear. You know, yeah, I was going to say like five years ago, it was a wild time. We were all trying yeah. to figure ourselves out. Still trying <laughs> to figure ourselves out, but less stressful than it was, than, you know, less stuff now, so. <laughs> I don't know if it's less stressful or it, eh, actually, different. it's different. It's more stressful. I'm older now. Like we're old. You know how many yeah. times I talk about politics and I'm like, I've become that person who just talks about <laughs> politics. Like, I hate it. I always say <laughs> younger, I'm like, never. I'm not going to be that guy who's like, opens up the news in the morning and is just like, man, this planet's going to poo. But here we are. <laughs> That's it. Grumpy old men. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. 
I still like to think I'm young at heart, but no, I'm, I don't think, I think I was a, always an old soul. So maybe I've just come into myself, you know? <laughs> like, I'm at the age where I feel I am right. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully I don't get older and I'll be like, God damn it. I'm just, I'm not looking forward to that, but uh, one day. <laughs> right. I'm like, now, like, especially with like things, I, I don't even, I don't even understand some of these young people things. Like, what is this TikTok business? Like, why is this popular? <laughs> I don't get it. It's just, it's Vine 2.0. Like, uh, you know what? It's just, that's just that. It's Vine. And people really missed Vine. Vine was great. Which is so funny because Vine closed like five, six years ago because it, it, it reached its popularity after a year. And I'm like, I see we're rehashing old ideas. Interesting. <laughs> Well, I think at the end of the day, all they have to do is just, they're just testing it for the next version of Instagram and then just throw that on there. And uh, yeah. we'll, we'll, like re Facebook will repurpose it for like our generation on, on Instagram and the older, like the boomer generation on, on Facebook. And then everyone will have their own little version. Yeah. It'll just be, <laughs> they'll just be collecting data there and collecting data there and everyone's data is everywhere. So it's, uh... And we're worried about China. We should just <laughs> worry about Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, so fair. So true. So accurate. I watched the the social dilemma. My God. Is it good? It, it's cheesy at points, but it, it has good ideas behind it. And it makes me question, especially like downloading apps on my phone or like going through certain websites, like, and giving people access to like location or like your file storage or like any of that stuff. It makes me question, especially because we develop, you know, like we we work on web apps, we work on mobile apps. So I'm like, in my mind, I'm like, I know how much information you can get from just like, oh, give me your location. Now you have like their first and last name because they signed in because they created an account. And now I have this and this. And I'm like, my data is everywhere. So like, it just makes me conscious about things I let have access, or sorry, let access to my own data, if that means. Totally. Yeah. You know what? I think like, because I always thought like, I remember like Facebook when it, people were start, first freaking out about it. I was like, you know what? It's better targeted ads. Like I want better ads, you know? <laughs> and like, that's how I always thought about it. And, and now as I'm getting older, I'm like, I don't want Facebook to know about like what I'm doing. I don't, I, I'm going to delete the app. Like I don't need this. Like, exactly. Right. I'm like, I don't, I don't need them. Like knowing I'm looking at this thing at this spot. So now I'm getting targeted ads for like sushi or Walmart or some shit. Like I, I do. Who needs that? Well, do you ever get like notific? Do you have like a, do you have a, so I have an Android phone and I'll just sometimes get notifications from Google being like, oh yeah, like we saw that you took a trip to this place. And I'm like, how did you know that? And also you got the wrong address, but it's next door. So I know exactly how you know that. Exactly. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> I get those. I have the Pixel 4 XL. So like anytime I'm like, hey Google, I'm like, oh, internal cringe. They're just that search thing that I'm using with voice. They're definitely taking that my voice they're definitely taking that anytime i use the visual like open screen thing with my face i'm like oh god I, <laughs> oh, no all this data no you just have to hope like i i think the the argument is like you know like it's the same thing with like the the police tracking people like through the yeah. streets or something like that it's like you know you, you don't want like people will always say like oh you, like you know like if you don't break the law it's not a problem right but the thing is like that, this all makes perfect sense. And it's, it's all like really cool and egalitarian in like, in like the way we live right now. And then you've got like, what's going down in the United States. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, it doesn't take too long for like some like guy to just, you know, just like change everything, you know, a military takeover. I don't think it's going to happen, but it could happen. And then it's like, who, who are the police at that point? You know? Hey man, we have to code for crap ton of edge cases. I, that's an edge case in life. I, it's there. It's definitely there. Who knows? Uh, who knows? Paranoid. And yeah, so I talk about politics literally all the time. <laughs> exactly. We're old. It's, it's just that now. I've come to accept I am old. I haven't done one of these with like a close friend before, so this is kind of fun. Yeah, <laughs> this is really fun. I, it, it's really cool. I haven't caught up with you in a long time. So like, this is, uh, it makes me think about a lot of stuff. Definitely makes me feel old. Like, and... It also makes me feel like I should be more social and, you know, like talking to other people and trying to uh, just like connect with a bunch of people I haven't talked to in a long time. So, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's been something 
that I've been thinking about quite a bit as well. Like, I think it's just, it's so easy to just like think like, oh, you know, like everything's going to come back at some point or like, oh, these are like, I'm, I'm busy. I got to do something else. And then, you know, five years later, you're like, man, I really miss all these guys. I used to hang out with all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. Cause they tell you when you're younger, you know, like life happens and you won't have time for a lot of stuff. And then you don't really believe it until you're in it. Right. And then you realize, yeah, I don't have a lot of time to like catch up with people or, you know, like I find I have other priorities that, that take over that stuff. So yeah, I guess trying to find time, I guess one of the takeaways from this is trying to find time to reconnect with people. I used to, used to be really good with. So yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a great sentiment, man. I <laughs> uh, you know. I appreciate that. Like it's, yeah, I feel like that's exactly, you know, that's a great takeaway. And then it's like, I think what you were saying earlier about even just like how you, like how you spend your time, like, okay. So you, like we focused on like, like work stuff, but then it almost immediately, like shortly after that, it was just like, you know, like don't spend all your time working. Like what's the point, right? Like it's like, yeah. What other priorities. Yeah. Like I, I guess working in the trades, I used to work like 12 hour days, six, seven days a week, man. Like I used to love working. I used to be a workaholic. Now I'm like, there's, there's more to life than just working. There, there is, there is more to life than just working. And, uh, and then contrast that with like, when we were younger, it's like, there's more to life than just partying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, it took me a while to learn that one. <laughs> you and me both, man. You and me, <laughs> not nearly as wild as I used to be. Not at all. Not even remotely close. My girlfriend's like one beer and I'm good. That that's where I'm at now. Like, the tiniest beer and i'm like whoo that's a lot of alcohol for me i'm out so if you were to like talk to a guy who's literally just you know maybe he, maybe he's in the trades or something like that right he's uh he's planning on he's he's frustrated with his job he hates he hates work he doesn't like working 12 hour days every every day of the week you know he wants to make a move like what would what advice would you give to that person to get to where you are today uh that's a good question if they have an idea of what they want to do, just go for it. I mean, yeah. Assuming that they're getting into programming. Like yeah. That's oh. kind of like the spot. Um, <laughs> ask help from everybody. Like, take in as much as you can. Is it book? If, you know, like if it's people, like talking to different people, understanding, getting, getting different ideas from people and getting different perspectives from people is great. Um, because you might understand a problem one way and I might understand a problem a different way. And you're like, someone else might understand a problem a different way, but the way that we solve it and the way that we come to that same solution or come to a solution is different for everybody. Um, reading as many books, as many videos, as many blog posts as you can and realizing that, you know, take a break and don't sink all of your time into it. You know, you, you take care of yourself. Mental health is key as well. Um, yeah, just, just go for it. And, uh, I honestly, I think with a uh, hard work and a bit of luck, it's possible for anyone to, to get into this field. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, a, it's just a bunch, a set of skills that you learn. And then once you learn them, like you said, you just do them and then you learn to deal with the other problems. Right. It, it, that, you know, it's, yeah, it's exactly that. <laughs> so it's that, uh, yeah. Takeaway, hard work. Don't push yourself too hard and take everyone's perspectives and opinions in. Oh, actually, I'm curious. Like, what's the, uh, what's the, like, Alberta tech scene like? Like, is there any? Uh, well, we have, do you know Intuit? Yeah. Have you ever heard of Intuit? Yeah, they're actually based out of Edmonton. Um, there was a company that Microsoft also bought from here, bought out, that's in Edmonton. Uh, Google... Oh crap! There's an AI scene because of the University of uh, University of like Alberta. Athabasca or U of A. Yeah, the U of oh, U Alberta University of Alberta. Yeah, so there's an AI scene that's happening as well. There's a bunch of startups that are also in like in Edmonton as well. Um, Punch Card made the top twenty startup list of McLean's or what, whatever that magazine is. So oh shit! Yeah, there's that. <laughs> That's a, that actually sounds like literally, you know, like I think when we were in school, that's what, where like a lot of the Toronto tech scene was at. 
where it was like people were just like starting a few startups. There's like a bunch of companies, the U of T uh, was like just pumping like talent into different companies. And then like now, now the big companies are coming over. So it's like changing a bit, but that's kind of funny. So like, I wonder if, uh, if Alberta is like the next big tech hub or even like everywhere, I guess. I, I would assume maybe depending on the provincial government and this is my old person talk, provincial government being okay, then yes, I, I would say Alberta would be, but otherwise, um, I don't know, maybe Calgary, maybe. Yeah, it was nice talking to you, but this was great. It was nice catching up with you as well. Yeah, it was cool to <laughs> catch up. Like, yeah, I, like, I think I was thinking about it before we started. I was just like, man, like, it's been a while. Like, I was a little nervous, honestly. <laughs> Same. I was like, oh, man, I don't know. I don't know what he's expecting. Am I supposed to be super wild? I'm like, I'm not that way anymore. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah dude i i uh i actually kept it up for way too long like <laughs> i i think like this last year i stopped drinking entirely oh damn like i'm i'm still smoking way too oh, much weed but bro like <laughs> bro, i i know that well too well oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like i had to give up the partying it was just yeah i don't know and then it came right at the perfect time you know it was right before covid hit and then i was like all right well yeah, you're like, I I'm will, good. <laughs> I will sit here alone in my room and think. <laughs> wow. Well, no, not quite you know. like that. I'm just making it melodramatic. I always do. Fair. I, I see yeah. that's how we sign off on these Zoom meetings. You're just like, and I sit at home alone in my room. Think. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 that's great. Oh. <laughs> uh. Oh, this was a blast. Yeah, we should do this again. Definitely. Cool, man. For this. <laughs> yeah. All right, man. That sounds good. I'll, I'll talk cool. to you later. <laughs> I'll talk to you later, dude. Take care, man. Yeah, see you, man.